everyone. Here's a quick bonus talk uh, because I know we didn't get to uh, that little uh, bit about uh, switching places in a canoe that I was talking about, and I thought you would find it kind of interesting. Uh, so I wanted to do a quick example. So remember a couple things. Uh, remember our definition. Let's think about being in one dimension. Let's put, let's call these canoe problems. I don't know what they're shifting positions with center of mass problems, but I like to think of them as canoe problems. And let's say uh, that you have, uh, let's remind ourselves, we're in one dimension, everything's x right now, the location of your x center of mass is just going to be the sum from i equals 1 to n of the uh, position of the of each mass divided by the total mass, which is just the sum of all the individual masses. Now remember if we take the derivative of that, so I take the derivative of this side and I take the derivative of this side, I can get an expression for the velocity at the center of mass, which is just going to be the sum from i equals 1 to n. Now I just do dx dt, which is going to be the velocity of each individual mass, and mass is a constant, so that just stays there. And similarly, the denominator is not time dependent. And so that's just going to be the total mass. What's interesting about this, if I rewrite this as the total mass, which it is, what I get is that mass times the velocity of the center of mass is equal to just the sum of i equals 1 to n of all the mi's and the vi's. And you might recognize this as the momentum of the center of mass. And that's the sum of the individual momenta of the individual objects. So that's a cool result, something neat to think about. I like this form, though, because you could be like two things are moving, three things are moving, a hundred things are moving. What's the velocity of the center of mass? Well, let's find. Um, uh, let's find all the velocities of all the individual things, multiply by the mass of the thing, divide by the total mass. That's going to give me the speed of the center of mass. I just think that's cool. Let's do one more derivative, same way, and you would get that the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to the sum of i equals 1 to n, ai, mi, because that's just the derivative of velocity with respect to time and acceleration and then divided there by the sum of all the masses or the total mass of the system. Well, this is kind of cool in its own right because when I multiply the mass up, I get mass times the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to the sum of i equals 1 to n. Well, what's ma for each individual mass? That's just the force on each individual mass. And so this is kind of cool, that the sum of all the individual forces is equal to ma for the center of mass. And now let's work backwards, because this is really neat. Let's say all the forces sum to zero. Let's say there's no net force on the system. All the forces are internal action-reaction pairs. There's nothing acting on the system from outside. That means this is zero. Well, if that's zero, the center of mass is not accelerating. If the center of mass is not accelerating, that means the velocity of your center of mass is constant. So no matter what happens, how those particles move, even how the individual forces act on the different particles, if all the forces cancel out, the velocity of your center of mass will stay steady in the same direction. What if your center of mass was not moving? What if initially your center of mass was at zero, velocity zero? Well, if no external forces act on the system, the that means that the velocity of your center of mass must stay zero. It means your center of mass cannot change location. This is what happens with canoe problems. So in a canoe problem, when you think about, and I, don't, I should say what I mean by a canoe problem. A canoe problem is where you have something like this. You're standing on a canoe. There's a little canoe or surfboard or something like that. And you're over here right now. And you have mass, the canoe has mass, 
everything stationary, the whole system's at V equals zero. You start to decide you're going to take a walk to the other side of the canoe, so you wind up over here. Well, that shifts the center of mass, right? Like that would move the center of mass probably of this system initially was somewhere closer to you. And if you go to the other side, it's going to shift the center of mass. But let's, but it's not. And let's think about why. Well, it will, but it's going to have, other things are going to happen so that it doesn't happen. You just moving to the other side, if someone was holding the canoe steady, would shift the center of mass. But instead, what's going to happen is the canoe is going to move. And it's going to move in such a way as to keep that center of mass at the original location. So even though you go to the other side, you try to shift the center of mass over there, the canoe is going to actually go the other way, so that center of mass stays constant. And the reason comes back to this. When I walk on a canoe, I push the canoe one way, the canoe pushes me the other way. The forces are internal between my feet and the canoe. There's no other forces. No one's touching the system. We could assume the water is frictionless, doesn't apply any appreciable drag force. So this is a system on which no forces act. Even though a force acts on me and a force acts on the canoe, those two forces cancel for the system of me and the canoe. No net force means no acceleration of the center of mass. No acceleration of the center of mass means it keeps its original velocity. Well, the original velocity of the center of mass was zero. If something keeps zero velocity, it means it ain't moving, it's staying exactly where it is. So this is a really cool result that comes from center of mass. Let's do a quick example and see how it works out. Let's say I have a little plank. And let's say the plank has a length of, I don't know, uh, six meters. Let's say I'm standing on this side. And let's say I have a mass of 80 kilograms. And let's say the plank has a mass of uh, 40 kilo, 30 kilograms, let's say. And we know for a uniform plank, its uh, weight is going to act down from its center. And so its mass, I don't know why I drew an arrow. Want an arrow over here. Its center of mass is going to be at its center, and its mass is going to be 30 kg acting from that point, three meters from where I am. Now, I'm going to slap a little coordinate system down here. I'm going to calculate the initial center of mass of this system. Let's do that. Well, by putting the zero at me, the center of mass is just going to be 80 kilograms times zero. That's me times my location. Plus the center of mass of the rod, which is of the, of the plank, which is 30 kilograms times its distance, which is six, three meters, and then divided by the sum of our two masses. Remember, you have to divide by the sum. So 80 plus 30 is 110 kilograms. So what is that? 800, uh, sorry, 90 divided by 110. I don't know what that is. I'm going to get my calculator out and calculate it. So 30 times 3. That's not 30 times 9, 30 times 3. When you get old, you can't see things anymore. You have to like hold your calculator really. I'm actually holding my calculator, but it's so far from my face, you can't see it. 30 times 3 divided by 110. And that is, let's call that 0.8. So the x center of mass equals, is that right? Yep, that's right. 0.8 meters. So it's like somewhere over here, which makes sense because I'm pretty heavy. The canoe's over here. It's going to be somewhere in between the two of us. And then like, I'm way heavier than that. Okay. So that's where that is. It's located 0.8 meters to the right of where I'm standing. Now let's say I go to the other side. I know that just me moving to the other side is going to, sh is going to shift the center of mass in the direction of me, right? But that's a problem because the center of mass has to stay where it is. The only other thing that can happen is the canoe is going to have to move this way. So the way to solve this is I take my canoe, I redraw it in the final position. This is what I find the easiest. Just draw the before and after picture. There's the canoe. There's the center of the canoe. 
I don't know how far it's moved, but let's call it x. Let's say it moved a little distance x over. So this distance here is x. Let me make that nicer. In fact, maybe I'll make it a little exaggerated so I could draw it better. So let's say this distance is x. Okay, so it's moved some distance. I'm now standing over here, 80 kilograms. And I know, and I could zoom a bunch of stuff up. So let's figure out like where I am from this. Well, this distance is going to be 6 meters minus x, since the whole plank was 6 meters. And then this distance is going to be 3 meters minus x, since this was 3 meters, that's x, that's 3 meters minus x. So let's recalculate the center of mass. That's going to be 80 kg, which is me, times 6 meters minus x, plus... 30, which is the center of mass, the mass of the thing, times 3 meters minus x. Remember, I'm putting my origin still at the same spot, okay, as it was before. And now just there's canoe on the other side of it, but I'm still saying how far is that from where I was, how far am I, and I've used both of those things. Then I want to divide by the same 110 kilograms. And you say, well, what good is that? But remember, the center of mass doesn't move. So I can set that whole thing equal to 0.8. When I multiply 110 times 0.8, so I'm going to multiply this, the original, center, the original center of mass times 110, 110 times 0.8, I get 88. And then I just have to expand this whole thing out. So I'm going to drop my units because it's going to get annoying. But it's 80 times 6 minus 80x plus 30 times 3, which is 90, right, minus 30x equals 88. And let's see. Um, I'm going to do this 80 times 6 plus 90 minus 88. Just doing out the arithmetic, um, I get uh, 482 equals uh, 110 x. 482 divided by 110 is 4.3. So what that means, in order to keep my center of mass in the same spot, this actually moved quite a bit. X, the canoe shifted a whole bunch over. I think that's probably right. You could double check my math. Maybe the, the number is different. It's still the same idea. I might, could have made a little uh, algebra mistake there. Um, but uh, and maybe I didn't. But so the canoe shifts all the way over, basically. Um, in order to keep that center of mass of this new system uh, still at 0.8. I think that's interesting. Uh, it actually shifts past the midpoint, puts the 30 kilograms all the way on the other side of that original axis. I'm so heavy now on the other side that it's somewhere in between me and the middle of the canoe. That's cool, and it's in the same spot that it was before. Okay, that's how you do canoe problems.